With Amazon Bedrock now in general availability, you might be wondering what's it all about? Well, Bedrock is a generative AI service that gives you access to leading pre-trained models that you can invoke programmatically using an API interface. Let's take a look at the Bedrock console to see how it all works. Before you can use Bedrock, you will first need to enable access for all of the models that you want to use. Here are the models that are available. So there's a few different models from providers like AI21 Labs from Amazon, Anthropic, Cohere, and Stability AI. Now, the great thing about Bedrock is that you can quickly and easily experiment to find the model that's best for your particular use case. Under Foundation Models, you can explore each of the models and read all about their capabilities. Under Custom Models, this is where you can customize a model by providing your own training data set. And you can also set some hyperparameters as well. Now, do be aware that by customizing a model, you are going to be training the model again. And that will end up costing you a lot of money. You can only do it using provision throughput that you need to purchase upfront. And it's either a one month or six month commitment. To customize, first of all, you can select a VPC to give the training job a private virtual network. And this is going to allow the model to securely access your data. You provide the data in S3. So I can simply select the files from an S3 bucket. Then down here, you can fine tune the model even further by changing a number of different hyperparameters. Now, epochs refers to the number of times training data passes through an algorithm. Increasing the number of epochs can increase the accuracy of the model. However, you've got to be careful because if you increase it too much, then you will get model overfitting. So the model will become too fitted to the training data and it won't cope well with new data. Batch size is the number of records in the data set that are sent to the model in each batch of training. Learning rate controls how much to adjust the model at the end of each batch of training. A higher number means the model will train faster, but that can be at the expense of model accuracy. Learning rate warm-up steps allows you to increase the learning rate gradually over a number of steps, allowing you to slowly adapt the model as it trains. And then finally, it's going to provide some output, including accuracy metrics and metrics for how the model performs with new data. And that can be saved to an S3 location. Under providers, they give you a detailed overview of each of the foundation models that are available, including example use cases, links to documentation, and example API code. So this is the code that you can use to interact programmatically with the pre-trained model. Then under Playgrounds, this is where you can interact with the pre-trained models. I'll select text and select a model. We can interact with the model by providing a prompt. So I'll give it a prompt. Write the top three use cases for generative AI and select run. And there we go. On the right hand menu, there's some settings that can be used to control randomness in the model responses. So you can have a play around with those. And then down at the end of the screen, you can view the API request that would be used if you wanted to call Bedrock using the application programming interface. And then down here, this is where you can purchase provision throughput. And this is needed if you want to customize and train models. I mentioned that it was expensive. So here's an example using Amazon's Titan model with a one month commitment, pretty costly. So that is Bedrock, generative AI that you can access and customize safely and securely within your own AWS account.